Welcome to today's video, which is a beginner's guide to coffee grinders. Because there's a lot of different coffee grinders out there, which is the right one for you? Which one meets your needs? Which is the best value for money? Now, what we're gonna do today is cover a little bit of theory at the start on coffee grinding, right? Understanding what's going on, why it's something worth worrying about, why it's something worth spending money on a bit of equipment to do it. And then in the second half, we'll talk through all of these grinders here, and talk through the features that you get, what happens when you spend more money, uh, and you, I hope at the end of it, will feel well equipped to buy a coffee grinder that meets your needs and have even better tasting coffee every morning. One quick thing, I'm not gonna necessarily recommend specific models nor review specific models in this video. Where I've talked about grinders before, there'll be links down in the description, you can watch those. I've done a, a number of different videos on particular grinders. Today, these are kind of representative grinders of different technologies or different different features just to kind of explain what's happening when you spend more money. But let's start with the theory. Let's start with what happens when we grind coffee, why we grind coffee in the first place. Now a whole coffee bean is a wonderful thing, but it doesn't make a good tasting coffee. Water cannot get to all of the flavor because it can only sort of get to the very outside of the bean. And so if you put whole beans in hot water, some flavor will come out, but really not very much. And so we grind it, we smash it into little tiny pieces because what we're concerned about first and foremost is exposing sort of more surface area. And the finer you grind anything, the more surface area that you have and the easier it is for the water to get in there, dissolve the flavor out, get it into your cup of coffee and for you to have a better, more delicious cup at the end of it. Now, one of the big sales you'll hear for a coffee grinder is that freshness is actually a really key aspect of grinding coffee. And that's true. When you smash coffee, you expose all of the surface area and it means everything that you've exposed can begin to go stale. And there are three ways in which coffee goes stale. The first and to me kind of saddest is the idea that you just lose those flavors. They go what's called volatile. They float off into the atmosphere and those flavors and aromas essentially wander off. You'll smell them for a minute and then you won't get to drink them later. So that's kind of a thing. So the older coffee is, the more flavor it essentially just loses to the air, to the atmosphere. The second thing that happens is that you have what are called sort of staling reactions where different compounds combine with each other and begin to create new flavors uh, that often aren't particularly nice. And so after a little while, your coffee will taste measurably worse as well as being less interesting. And then the third thing is oxidation. And that'll happen to sort of some of the fats and oils inside coffee. They will oxidize and essentially begin to go rancid it's not a great smell or taste rancid oil. And rancid oil in all forms smells a little bit fishy and that's true with coffee. So very old, very stale, rancid coffee is not something I would recommend. And the best way to avoid all of those things is really only to smash the coffee bean to pieces when you want to immediately then brew it. That way you capture a lot more flavor, you have less loss of quality. It's just a better time all round. Now, occasionally on the internet, you'll see a thing that says pre-ground coffee from a very, very, very good commercial grinder will make better coffee in many cases than fresh ground coffee from a very cheap coffee grinder. And that's an interesting test and study that was done. I think it ignores some of the other reasons to buy a coffee grinder, we'll get to in a second, but, but really what isn't to be underestimated is just the pleasure of grinding coffee. In that moment, there is an enormous release of smell that is fantastic. That moment of grinding coffee, be it in the morning first thing or in the afternoon, it's a pleasure not to be missed. So from that perspective alone, a coffee grinder is worth having. And if you own a pepper grinder of any kind, then you owe it to yourself to own a coffee grinder too, if you drink coffee. Now, the second thing that gets talked about a lot is called grind uniformity. And that's the idea that when you grind coffee, ideally, the little pieces that you make should all be the same size, because when you come to prepare them later, brew them into a cup of coffee, the more uniform the size is, the better. They'll give up their flavor in a more uniform way. Uh, and that makes sense from anything in the kitchen if you're trying to cook some potatoes. If you cook a little tiny piece of potato and a whole potato, they'll cook at very different rates and they probably won't cook well together. Same thing with coffee grinding, right? If you are trying to brew loads of little tiny pieces of coffee alongside loads of very big pieces of coffee, you'll get a lot of flavor out of the tiny pieces and not very much out of the other pieces. And this can result in a very unbalanced, unpleasant cup of coffee. Those tiny pieces can add some bitterness. Those giant pieces can add some sourness. And those two things combined 
are not how I want to start my day. So as we talk through grinders, you'll hear me reference this idea of, of grind uniformity. And it, it is important. It helps you make better tasting coffee to have the pieces be a very similar size. You'll have less unbalanced, less unpleasant cups of coffee, more delicious cups of coffee. Now, the third aspect of coffee grinders that's very important, of coffee grinding that's very important, is grind size control. The ideal grind size for espresso is very different from the ideal grind size for something like a French press, for example. Right? With espresso, you want lots and lots of very fine, small pieces because you're going to extract that coffee with very little liquid to make it very strong. With a French press, you might want to grind it a little bit coarser. So being able to control the grind size is really, really, really important, particularly so in espresso, but we'll touch on that a little bit later. So that's it. That's the key information to think about as we go into looking at these different grinders. It'll help us to understand why you might want to spend a bit more money here or there. But before we get into that, there's a quick ad for this video's sponsor, which is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community full of thousands of classes for creative and curious people like you and me. And you can explore new skills, you can deepen existing passions, or you can challenge yourself creatively, as I have been doing recently. I've really enjoyed Andy J. Pizza's class. It's been covering things about finding your style, uncovering your own kind of creative identity. As someone who does creative work, it's really important and helpful to challenge your thinking and challenge what you're doing if you want to make better work in the future. And for less than $10 a month, Skillshare is incredibly affordable, and it gives you access to every single class that's on the platform. And if you're curious, click the link down below. The first thousand of you to use that link will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium. Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. So let's start with these 10 grinders in front of me. Let's start at the beginning with the cheapest grinder on offer, which is this. It's a blade grinder. And these can be had for like 20 pounds. They're very cheap. They're very simple things. You've got a little motor, and that's attached to some spinning blades inside here. And when you turn the grinder on, these spin really, really quickly. And essentially those blades, they're not very sharp. They kind of just smash the coffee down into little pieces. The longer you run it, the finer the coffee will be. But the problem with these is that you really don't have any control meaningfully over grind size. To have really the same grind size every time is quite tricky, and to have a uniform grind size is extremely unlikely. This kind of act of violence of just smashing the coffee beans instead of cutting them creates a lot of very fine pieces that can add a lot of muddiness and bitterness and kind of dullness to your cup of coffee in the morning. I'm not saying you can't enjoy coffee made with a blade grinder, and there's some some hacks you can do too to improve the quality of its output. That's linked up here. If you're enjoying coffee with a blade grinder now, you could really, really be enjoying your coffee a lot more with a better grinder that offers you a little bit more control and uniformity. If you own one of these and you're upgrading from it, do not throw it away. They make for fantastic spice grinders. They are useful to have around, but to grind coffee, they are a little bit frustrating. So then we move from what are called blade grinders into the rest of these, which are called burr grinders. So inside these, you've got two cutting discs. One spins against the other, and controlling the distance between the two controls how big the pieces are when they finally get out of the grinder into the collection bin below, where you're gonna sort of take them and then pour them into your brewer or whatever you're gonna do with them. This is a classic kind of entry-level hand grinder. It's relatively cheap, it's about 40 pounds, and a lot of people choose to start their sort of grinding journey here with one of these because it's not a huge investment. Uh, and that's true. You'll have some control of the grind setting in something like this. You, you can control the burr distance. This is a conical burr grinder. So you've got a kind of cone-shaped main burr that spins inside this thing. Conical burrs are popular in a lot of grinders. They have a larger cutting surface, uh, which helps you kind of grind more coffee through kind of per turn, which is useful. This is in contrast to what are called flat burr grinders, where you have two discs or rings of cutting teeth. One spins against the other. Same control mechanism. You just move them further apart for a coarser grind or closer together for a finer grind. Now the Burrs and cheaper hand grinders especially tend to be made of ceramic. This is a cheaper material to produce. They don't cut quite as cleanly, so your grind uniformity isn't quite as good as a metal burr. But as an entry-level thing, they, they work okay. What you tend to see also in cheaper burr grinders is a little bit of wobbling from that bottom burr as it's grinding, because it's not stabilized super well because they're trying to keep costs down. That will also result in a less uniform cup of coffee. So if you look at going from, say, 40 pounds up to 100 pounds, right? You, you've got the same basic technology. You're gonna be doing the work here. You are turning, you're working to crush the coffee between those burrs. Now here you go from a plastic construction to a metal construction. You go from ceramic burrs to metal burrs. So it's a big jump in quality going from 40 pounds to say 100 pounds. Now with the previous grinder and this grinder and the next grinder too, they are what's called stepped grinders where you adjust the grind here at the bottom 
by fixed amounts. This is sort of a step that kind of clicks into place, uh, and that's a controlled movement. That means that you've got pretty good control of a ground size, but not infinite control in a way. And later on, we'll talk about stepless grinders. But for the purposes here, steps work very well. They're repeatable, they're useful to have. This will do a better job grinding coffee than the 40 pound grinder by a good amount actually. By not needing a motor, by having you do the hard work, you can kind of invest a bit more in the other things like the burr quality uh, and get better results for less money. The downside of course is that you have to do the grinding every time every morning. And if you're grinding a lot of coffee, that can take a while. And it is hard work. Grinding coffee is relatively physical. That can change with more expensive grinders or bigger grinders, but ultimately hand grinding is something you have to kind of enjoy doing. As you go from a hundred pounds up to something much more expensive in the hand grinder world, generally you're getting an increase in construction. Again, this is better made. This feels solid. It's great materials, but really you're going to be paying for better grinder uniformity. And that's what more expensive hand grinders generally offer. And at this price point, the grinds coming from this are very, very good. And you can grind effectively for espresso with an expensive hand grinder. It's really hard work, but you can do it. Or you can grind for filter coffee pretty well. So that's kind of what you've spent with hand grinders going from something pretty cheap, cheaper materials, cheaper burr construction, less uniformity. And that's what's increased as you've gone up and up and up. So there are lots of reasons to have a hand grinder. It might be that you travel a lot. It might be that you like camping. It might be that just you enjoy that whole thing. But if you are at home, you're grinding coffee every single day, then I would recommend investing in an electric coffee grinder. And that's where we start here. So this grinder here is cheaper than this hand grinder. It's a little bit more expensive than this grinder here, but it's a great way to start the day. You have an electric motor in there, uh, and that's spinning a conical burr set. And that's what you tend to see at entry level, decent home electric grinder price points. Now, cheaper grinders will have cheaper motors. And because grinding coffee is hard work, a cheaper motor will overcome the sort of power needed to crush those beans by just spinning faster. So you'll tend to see cheaper grinders have faster RPMs on their motors. They don't always grind coffee through the burrs quicker, but they will generally be a little bit louder. That motor spinning generates some noise. If it's spinning very fast, the way it cuts coffee, you'll just get a bit more noise in the morning. This grinder, as you tend to see at this price point, is a stepped grinder, so you've got fixed steps, and it's not really able to do espresso. Right? We talked about having a cheaper motor, spinning that bit faster, but when you're grinding very, very, very fine, you need a lot of power, you need a lot of torque in that motor, and cheaper motors just can't do it. So you tend to see cheaper grinders like this are great if you need filter coffee, but not great if you're trying to brew espresso. If you look at, say, a filter dedicated grinder at about 125 pounds, going up to, say, 250 pounds, then you see a variation in the features that's kind of interesting. This grinder was initially designed to hold like a bag of coffee in the hopper here and have a little timer on the side that you would adjust and you'd push go and it would grind for a fixed amount of time to dispense the amount of coffee that you wanted. But that's not how many people want a coffee grinder to work. You want what's called a single dose grinder, where you're gonna put in what you need and no more in terms of coffee beans for that drink, that batch, whatever it's gonna be. It might be that you wanna keep the coffee stored and sealed away and not sitting in the grinder. It might be that you have more than one coffee at home and you wanna vary one bean to the next. A grinder like this is designed to be a single dose grinder. You can't really fit that much coffee in the top here, so you'd only pour in what you'd need. Instead of having a timer, this has an auto shut off that stops the grinder when it's no longer grinding coffee. This grinder, like this grinder, is a stepped grinder, so you've got fixed increments that you can adjust the grind size by, and this grinder is also a filter coffee only grinder. Its motor, its setup is really built around filter coffee and not espresso. What you tended to see historically was when you, when you need espresso, you had a dedicated espresso style grinder. And this is a pretty good example. There's a bit of a jump in price because you've got a, a more substantial motor in there. And this is about, I think, 350 pounds, which is some pretty serious money. Now this is designed really to be a dedicated espresso grinder. And it's a little bit more traditional in its design, which means it's got a large hopper on top to, again, hold a big bag of coffee beans in there and grind what you need when you need it. Many people choose not to do that, as I said, and use these as single dose, though you'd probably want to replace this hopper with something more appropriate. What you see as you go from a filter coffee dedicated grinder to an espresso dedicated grinder is not just the ability to grind finer, but you tend to see stepless adjustment. Right? Where you control the fineness or the coarseness, it's usually just a wheel that you can move as little or as much as you want. Espresso requires very small adjustments to grind size to have quite a substantial change in the way that the coffee brews, so you want as much control as is possible. So that's what you tend to see 
in a dedicated espresso grinder. This will grind using time. So you push go and it'll grind for say 9.2 seconds to give you a consistent dose of coffee. This kind of grinder you can buy in a huge number of different configurations from different manufacturers. You'll have different motor sizes, different burr sizes, different burr shapes, uh, you know, different kind of technologies controlling how much coffee it grinds as it grinds. But the base principle is kind of there. If you're grinding for espresso, you need that more powerful motor, and that tends to mean you need to spend more money, and that's where your money is going. Now, these two grinders are emblematic of more modern approaches to grinders. This kind of grinder has existed for 60, if not 70 years now. These are much newer. As you'll see, they're both grind to order grinders. They have no real space to hold much coffee. They'll hold a single dose and no more, but they're also designed to go all the way from coarser filter grinds through to a very fine espresso grinds. This one is a, a flat burr grinder and this one is a conical burr grinder. This one is a little bit cheaper. I think about 400 pounds. This one is a little bit more expensive at 500 pounds. Feature wise, they're both very similar. You're grinding into a, a little collection bin that you might then use to pour into a pour over or pour directly into a porter filter if you're making espresso. Now the difference in price between the two might come down to uh, the design and construction of these, the materials used or the components used. It might also come down to their approach to things like retention. Now, retention isn't something that we've talked about yet, but it is something that's actually very important and you'll see discussed in a lot of different grinder reviews. When you put coffee beans into a grinder, it'll go into a chamber that holds the cutting discs, those spin, those push out the grounds, ideally all of them, but typically not quite all of them. There might be anywhere from 0.2 of a gram to two grams or even sometimes more stuck inside the grinder that the mechanism is unable to completely push out. Now with more traditional designs like this one, that wasn't considered a huge issue because you know it'll be pushed out when you grind for coffee the next time. The downside is when you change your grind, you'll have some of the retained old grind setting that you would need to purge out. That's a little bit wasteful. And the more you need to purge out with a grinder, the more wasteful that grinder is. Some commercial grinders can need 20 or 30 grams purging, not acceptable, but that's how things were for a long time. More modern solutions might need a couple of grams, if anything at all. So design around retention is really a key thing. Here you've got quite a different approach. The retention is dealt with by the sort of innate design of the burr chamber. Here you've got a bellows where you'd push down, that would blow air through the grinding chamber, pushing out the last bit of coffee into the collection cup below. That's the kind of idea there. How a grinder deals with retention, be it bellows or be it a little knocker, on the side of it is something you should think about and decide how you want to spend your money because it will impact your kind of workflow in the morning. Do you want to have to go and clack a thing a few times or press the bellows a few times? If it doesn't bother you and it saves you some money, then it's worth considering. But retention is important and retention is discussed a lot when you watch other reviews of grinders on YouTube or read about them on websites. So the understanding I think is really, really, really key. Now, one last note on, on conical versus flat burrs, and I don't wanna to get too deeply into an esoteric discussion here, but some people believe that conical burrs suit espresso a little bit more, that having a little bit more diversity of size of particle can help give some more texture, some more body to your espresso. Other people prefer sort of flat bird style espresso where you have a little bit more clarity, maybe more sweetness, but not quite as much texture. Understanding that is a consideration if you're getting into the fine end of dialing into espresso when you've got a great machine and you, you want a great grinder to match it. But if it's your first grinder, it's not something you necessarily need to obsess about until your technique and other aspects of coffee making catch up to that. Now, one last note on burrs is that some grinders have options for different burrs that you can install. Grinders like this or this, you can install different burrs from different manufacturers that will give you different results. If you are shopping for a grinder and you're kind of wanting to future-proof it, considering a grinder that has some options for grinder burrs is, is one thing to maybe just bear in mind as you're shopping. That's not essential, but it is a kind of nice to have if you're thinking about buying a grinder that's gonna last you for a really long time without worrying about needing to constantly upgrade. Now, these nine grinders I have here are, I think, viable first-time purchases, even though we've gone all the way up to 500 pounds. I could see this still being someone's first coffee grinder at home. I did want to include a little bit more just to explain how people can end up spending enormous amounts of money on coffee grinders for what they're chasing. Now, this grinder on the end is incredibly expensive. It's three and a half thousand dollars, but I think it's it's a good example of, of how far people will go in the chase for better uniformity, better construction, or better design, or better build, more control. Here you've got variable RPM. I can change the speed of my motor uh, to achieve different results in how it grinds. The workflow is kind of different and very nice. It's beautiful. I can easily switch the burrs out in it. 
you know, these kind of details are, are what you end up paying for. Now understand that going from a more entry level grinder to something like this is a big leap in quality and a great return on your investment. Going from something like these up to something like this is an increase in quality, but it's a smaller leap, it's a more incremental increase for a lot more money. And that's true of most things in this world, right? Like the closer you get to, to sort of the end goal, the more expensive and the more difficult it is to do any sort of an upgrade. I'm not saying this is bad value for money, but if you're looking at spending a lot of money on a coffee grinder, you really have to have some very specific problems that only it will solve for you. As a final note, these look like they go from sort of the, the lowest quality to the highest quality, but that isn't quite true. Hand grinders are a cheaper way to achieve better quality, better grind uniformity at lower prices because you don't have to spend money on the motor. So you're just spending on burr and construction generally. So that is the beginner's guide to coffee grinders. And it's there I hope to help you build a little flow chart for you and your needs and your budget. If you've got 300 pounds and you want a filter coffee grinder, then I can help you get to where you need to go based on your needs. Do you want absolute quality for the money or do you want an electric motor to help you do some of the work? These are questions I can't answer for you, but hopefully now you can answer them for yourself uh, and make a better decision. And, and do know there are still things that we haven't talked about here that are little details that are worth looking out for in reviews. Things like the, not just the loudness of a grinder, but the quality of sound. Does it grate on you? That kind of stuff. Things like the user interface. Does it frustrate you? Is it quirky? Is it frustrating? Is it finicky? Those things are important and should be looked out for when you're checking out a review before you purchase. But now I want to hear from you down in the comments below. Do you have one of these? Are you thinking about upgrading to one of these? What are you looking for in a coffee grinder? And how has this video potentially helped you make a better decision? I'd love your feedback. I'd love your thoughts. But for now, I'll say thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.